What's going on, everybody? Gianna Ben94 here. Welcome back to Ben Build. Thank you so much for joining us. Today, we have episode 17 for you on the Albatross. And as promised, this will be the final episode in this build series. All we have left to do is the rigging. Now, I'll be using Easy Line as my rigging material. I have my super glue here, some Instacure for my local hobby store. We are ready to rock. And hopefully, this all goes together well. Now what we're going to do is take our easy line thread, we're going to feed it down through our turnbuckle, glue it there, stretch it to the next turnbuckle, glue it there, and rinse and repeat. So basically from point A to point B, and then another point A to point B. It shouldn't be all that difficult. But what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to install one extra step. I've seen online where someone actually takes a little plastic sheath and they install that right where the turnbuckle is located. So the easy line will actually run down through that plastic sheath, wrap through the turnbuckle, and then back up through the plastic sheath where I will glue it, cut the excess off, and do that at every single locating point throughout the entire airplane, except for the rear tail. Now the rear tail just has a plain straight shot right out of the fuselage to those locating tabs here on the back of the aileron. So that's where we're gonna start today because I figure, hey, it's easy. I'm going to take my custom super glue applicator, which is just basically a hobby knife with no blade and a little piece of wire threaded into the front of that. We're going to drop a little bit of super glue onto the locating holder that I drilled a couple episodes ago. We're going to take our easy line, we're going to take our tweezers, and we're going to press that easy line down into that hole and let that super glue kind of cure up and set. Then we're going to be able to stretch that back over the rear attachment point, glue it there, wait for it to dry, and cut off the excess. We have to do four of these in total, two on top, two on the bottom. Because I've never worked with Easy Line before, I figured we might as well start easy. And this will probably be the simplest application area on the entire model. Again, it's just a straight shot from fuselage to the attachment point on the ailerons. Not too bad. Now that that is dry, I'm going to stretch out the rest of the Easy Line, take my hobby knife, cut right there. Might need to cut a little bit more. I want to make sure I don't press too hard. I don't want to break off that plastic tab. But a little bit more pressure there on the knife and. And there we go. Perfect. All right. So that is all cut off. Now I've got the top two done. I'm going to take a little bit of super glue here and make sure that everything is locked into place. It actually looks pretty cool, to be honest. My very first time using Easy Line, I like it. So we're going to flip this model over, do the bottom side, and hope for the best. Fingers crossed, guys. Let's get this done. Not too bad, everybody. So we're gonna go ahead and move on now to those plastic sheaths I was talking about before. Now on the video, I watched a gentleman take the portion here in the center, which is plastic. And if you notice, hollow, he stretched it to form a very thin plastic tube. Then he cut those into lengths and then used them on the model. So we're gonna try that exact process. I've got my candle here. We're going to attempt just to give a little bit of heat on this until it becomes soft, not quite there. A little bit more and stretch it out trying to maintain you know that nice center open area and i think it looks pretty good so we're going to actually make a few more of these and then we're going to take the ends off so we'll just cut off the, both ends of this we could just throw these away because they're already used and then we have a nice center tube in the middle we can take that hollow it out and i think we're ready to go to use that on our model all right so here we go guys i'm going to go ahead and give this a try we are going to take our easy line we're going to feed it through our turnbuckle and I've already installed it through the plastic sheath and that worked out pretty well so now let's see if I can't get it through this opening right here it's gonna be really finicky because everything is super small I mean I should get a magnifying glass or something which I don't have but these are really really tiny openings it is basically threading string through an eye of a needle it's that tiny actually it's even smaller than that too 
Now that I've got it more or less through, we just have to drag this out just to make sure that we have enough here we can grab onto with our tweezers. All right, grab this. There it is. Now we're going to grab a hold of that with our fingers. There we are. Grab it again with our tweezers. Boy, you need like three hands to do this. And then we're going to feed this up back through that plastic sheath. Once that's through, we're going to be able to stretch it down, tighten it. We'll be ready to go with the glue. So just got to feed that through. Also, another very tiny, tiny opening. Make sure that that lines up nicely. There we go. Just get it started. I'll pinch it. There we go. And tie it down. Perfect. Now we'll take a little bit of super glue. Just drop a little bit right there on the actual turnbuckle itself and on the plastic sheath. All right. Let that cure up pretty quickly there. And we should be able to take that, stretch it out just a little bit. This is a stretchy material, so I'm going to stretch it just a tiny bit, and we're going to loop it around and glue it here and install another plastic sheath. That turned out well, I have to say. The plastic sheath may be a little bit big for this application, but I'm going to run with it anyway because, well, hey, it's my first time ever trying it. We're going to use my flush cuts. We're going to cut off the excess. Actually, my flush cuts are super, super dull. I need to get some fresh ones. And there we go. We have one string already attached with a plastic sheath on each end and attached into the turnbuckles. Yeah, not too shabby. So you can see it there. It's very tiny though, guys. It is very, very small. So I'm not sure how much of this process you're going to be able to see, but I'm going to give my best to show you as much as I can. So I took some time off camera and I made quite a few of these plastic sheaths. Pretty decent. I have no complaints. So we're now going to install a couple more and we're going to try to go ahead and thread out as many turnbuckles as we can. We have an attachment point here in the center of the fuselage. We have one at the end of the wing as well. I've made sure that those are nice and stable, nice and solid. We're ready to go to start stringing the main majority of the wings. Now I've seen a few videos where model builders will actually install all the rigging into the top wing before they go ahead and glue it down to the bottom wing and all the supports. That's not a bad idea. I mean, live and learn, right? This is the first time I've ever done anything with rigging before, but I could see the advantages to that because once you get all the wings together, it gets real difficult to get any sort of tool or finger between those wings, at least in 148 scale. And I would imagine it's impossible 172nd. So that's something I might consider with the next model I build that has World War I rigging. I might try that. Otherwise, though, it's going along decently. We're going to take a little bit of super glue. We're going to glue these down so they don't move too much. I find if you stretch it too much, it really becomes super thin. If you don't stretch it enough, it sags. So there's a nice happy medium right in the middle there where everything is stretched so that you can go ahead and glue it down and everything works well. So now we're going to attach the opposite end of that into the inside wing joint. Just a little bit of super glue right there. The plastic sheath is on. The turnbuckles are solid. They haven't moved or come out yet. So that's really, really good. I think we are ready to go ahead and hit that time lapse and push through and get as much done as we can. I'm going to clip off the edge here just with my flush cuts. There we are. Yeah, not bad. As you can see here, we have our first two strings here on the rigging for the wings. We're looking pretty decent. Let's go ahead, cue the time lapse, get this thing done.
right, guys, we have our rigging completed. I need to drop a little bit more super glue right here on this wing joint, and we will be done with the rigging process. I got to tell you, as a newcomer into this game, it really is a daunting task. There's a lot of strings and a lot of rigging that you just kind of have to just push through. You know, it's not the hardest job I've ever done, but it is quite time consuming. And there we have it. Our rigging is done. It looks so cool, guys. I got to tell you, I'm super happy about this. I've never rigged anything before. We've got all of our turnbuckles stayed in place, so I'm really happy about that. All of our plastic sheaths, even though they're a little bit too large, I'd actually prefer them a little bit thinner, but I think they look great. I think everything turned out beautifully. I'm super happy. I'm really excited to go ahead and move on to the next section. But there is one thing I want to go ahead and do. I want to go ahead and take my micro brush and I want to paint each of those plastic sheaths. So I'm going to go ahead and do a quick time lapse. We're going to paint each of those plastic sheaths with this bronze color. That should add a little bit extra pop and really kind of give it some character. All right, everybody, we are finished. Here she is, the 148 scale Albatross D3 by Edward, the weekend edition kit. It took me a bit longer than a weekend, to be honest, but this thing looks great. I'm super happy. Being my very first World War I aircraft, I couldn't be happier. Now to go to a close-up for you guys, and you can see just the amount of rigging that I had to do. There's a lot on this kit for sure. Honestly, I did not expect this to look this good, at least for me. My one complaint though is my sheaths are a little bit too thick. I would have preferred them to be even thinner, but hey, live and learn. I would have done a little bit more work on the fuselage had I kind of understood how to work with oils and to make wood grain, but next time I'm definitely gonna go a little heavier on the wood grain there on the fuselage. The rear tail turned out beautifully, the rear tail skid, all the cables and all the actuators, I love it, it looks great. Again, the other side of the aircraft, as you can see, a lot of the rigging. I, again, would have gone a little bit thinner with those plastic sheaths. I would have done that a little differently, but honestly, it looks great. The only scratch building I really did here was on the inside of the cockpit. I added some belts. That's it. If I'd wanted to go even further, I could have, but I think that's good enough. So overall, I got to say this kit was a lot of fun to build. Not too shabby for my very first World War I aircraft, my very first time rigging, and my very first time trying any sort of wood grain with oil paint. I've never done any of that before, and I think I pulled it off. Will it win any awards? No. Is it perfect? No. Is it accurate? Meh, maybe here and there. But you know what? It doesn't matter because I had fun building it. It's an amazing little model. I highly recommend it. If you're down with World War One aircraft, check out the Albatross D3 by Edward. The weekend condition kit is fantastic. So until next time, everybody, thank you so much for hanging on pushing through with all the episodes I had. I really took this one nice and slow because I didn't want to make any mistakes and I am very pleased. So we'll see you back here next week where we have a new model kit for you and we're going to be jumping in on some group builds. So thank you so much for watching guys. We'll see you back here next week on Ben Builds. <laughs>